there are no doubts now actually about the, how important is uh, hydration in sport, but also for a normal life. For example, in Spain, where the weather could be very hot in summer or hot and humid. So clearly it's a very important topic uh, now in sport and in a normal life. The, uh, for me, the most important topic today were the, the beginning of the, of the lectures in the morning related to health, not only to sport. Uh, a few lectures were related to health, the health of the, um, and people at the hospitals, how they should be hydrated. So that point, from my point of view, as a medical doctor, uh, is very, very important. Today I did an approach to the limitation of, of endurance in situation of, of heat, an approach from the real world of sport. In the real world of sport, people say and see that the temperature increase more than expected. That causes fatigue and the response to this uh, increase in temperature is very individual. And later I moved from sport to science and then to science to sport. And um, from science we know more or less the same, that temperature goes higher than expected to 39, 39.5, 40 degrees, that cause fatigue, mm -hmm. central fatigue in your brain and also in your cardiovascular system. And that re the, the response could be different. People, some athletes are good responders and some athletes are bad responders. And at the end, I've been doing a small summary of the strategies in sport to deal with this increase in temperature. Two main strategies. One of them is cooling, but it's very difficult sometimes to cool down an athlete. Cooling strategies and hydration. It's, there's no question that the uh, cardiovascular system needs water, needs fluid to move the temperature from one part to another. So the two main strategies are hydration and cooling. <laughs>